The first family of spatial descriptive statistics that we're going to explore are those pertaining to measures of central tendency of point distributions. Now it's not always the case that spatial, and spatial statistical techniques follow directly from aspatial analogs, but at least in the case of all of the statistics that we're learning in this lecture about descriptive spatial statistics, we do find that we are simply borrowing definitions and terms from aspatial statistics and applying them to the spatial variables x and y, the coordinates of a point distribution. So the first measure of central tendency that we're going to investigate is the mean center, which is anonymous, uh, sorry, uh, analogous to the center of gravity of a point distribution. So let's define uh, the coordinates of points in the normal way using an x variable and a y variable. We can use the mean center to simply describe the general whereabouts of a distribution, the absolute location of the distribution. We can also compute a mean center for a point distribution at different time periods and therefore track how a, a point distribution is shifting in space over time. We could also compare the locations of different types of events. For example, what if we were to compare a point distribution of burglaries in the city versus a point distribution of murders in the city? The mean center would tell us the general whereabouts of where the murders are taking place and we can compare that to the general whereabouts of where the burglaries are taking pay place. The formula for the mean center is very similar to that of just an aspatial mean, except in this case the formula for the mean center is actually uh, or the, not the formula, but the actual mean center in itself is a couplet of points. The first thing in this pair is just the mean of the x variables, the mean of the x coordinate. So when we calculate the mean center for the x dimension, we're simply just taking the average x coordinate of all of our points. And similarly, when we calculate the coordinate, the y coordinate for the mean center, we're simply calculating the mean of all the y coordinates in our data set. When we calculate the x coordinate, the x mean, and the y mean separately, we then bring them together into a couplet that's defined as the mean center. So let's do some practice. This shouldn't be hard at all. We already know the formula for the mean. So in order to find uh, the, the mean uh, in the x dimension, we simply take the mean of the x coordinates. So here we have a point distribution consisting of five points, and for each point we know the x and y uh, coordinate. So to calculate the mean of the x's, we just need to sum them all up and divide by the sample size. In this case, the sample size is five. We have five points. So the sum of these values is 0 plus 3, 8, 15, 24. And the sum of the y's, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 16. So xc is equal 24 over 5, which is equal to 4.8. And yc is equal to 16 over 5, which equals 3.2. Here is the plot of the point distribution with the x dimension on the horizontal and the y dimension on the vertical and each of these points corresponds to one of the coordinate pairs that we had in the previous table and what we are showing over here is the location of the mean center of this point distribution. So that point is a representative, uh, single representative location of the points in the distribution. I should caution you that mean centers are, are sensitive to outliers, just like how the mean is sensitive to large outliers in the aspatial case. So in this case, one or two extreme valued points, or one or two 
uh, points that exist far away from the cluster of other points may very substantially shift the mean in that direction. So we have a few solutions to deal with that. We can remove the outlying points if we like, or instead of using the mean, we can find some kind of method that instead looks at the median of the point distribution. As we know, the median is not sensitive to outliers in the same way that the mean is. So here's an example. What we've done is we've added one more point to the point distribution that we had before. And we've put this point way off the grid. x is equal to 30 and y is equal to 20. When we recalculate the mean center, we find that the mean center is located at 9, 6. And if you recall, the mean center before was located somewhere near 4, 3. So the addition of just one large spatial outlier is pulling the mean center way off into the distance. And I've got that in this figure. The outlying point is somewhere over here, located at 30, 20. But the influence of that one point will pull the mean center all the way from where it was before the addition of that point out to this location at 9, 6. So the single best point now is very much being driven by the fact that there's an outlier off to the top right. An alternative to that is just simply using the median center, or calculating the median of the x values. So if we were to sort these x values and find the median, uh, there are six values. So the middle three values, and these are in sorted order already, is between 5 and 7. So we get an x mean of 6. And if we were to sort the y's and find the middle two, they would have a median of 3.5. And here is that median. And we see that the median center, it's still shifted somewhat because we've got such a small sample size, so any additional point is likely to shift the the location of any descriptive statistic. But we see that the shift occurring is much smaller in this case than it was when we are calculating the mean center.